If you're taking care of a patient with an arterial line, you're going to want to know how to troubleshoot it. Arterial lines are amazing. They give you a real-time blood pressure. You can draw labs off of them, and they're a very nifty device to have on our sicker ICU patients. But the numbers you get off of an arterial line are only as good as the accuracy of the arterial line, and so you're going to want to know how to troubleshoot it. When you're looking at your arterial line waveforms, this is how your arterial line waveform should look. This is what we would call an optimally damped arterial line waveform. And how we figure this out is two things. One, we're gonna look at it. You should be able to see a dichrotic notch. Uh, this peak right here should not be too rounded. See how that's a little more rounded. And it should not be too pointy or whipped, like how this one is. Just the perfect little mound. When you perform a square wave test, which is where you perform a fast flush by pulling the pigtail or hooking up to some saline and pushing some saline really quick, you, if you're looking at your monitor, you're going to see when you flush that the line gets very square on the top. When you release that little pigtail flush or stop flushing, you're going to see how many oscillations, or I like to call them bouncies, are after your square wave. In an optimally damped waveform, you should have 1.5 to 2 oscillations. If you have less than that, you are overdamped. If you have more than that, you are underdamped. So if your waveform looks like this, you have your transducer leveled and zeroed at the flebostatic axis, you're good. You can pretty much assure that your arterial line is probably reading accurately, especially if you compare it to a manual blood pressure cuff, you're probably good to go. But if you see your waveform looks overdamped or underdamped, we need to do some further troubleshooting. There are different things that cause overdamped versus underdamped, but to be honest, your troubleshooting is pretty much all the same. Just really quick, a couple differences between overdamped and underdamped. Overdamped, you're going to have less than 1.5 oscillations. A lot of times when you do your square wave, you'll have zero or maybe one little bouncy. And with your underdamped, you're going to have a bunch of these little bouncies. You also may see a couple more of these little spiky peaks in there and it looks very whipped. I always used to confuse overdamped and underdamped for whatever reason I like to flip them in my head, but someone told me to think of it in this way and it's really helped. Overdamped, think of an over wet head of hair, how it's very heavy, it's almost suppressed. And if you look up here, you kind of see that your waveform is kind of suppressed, you have less bouncies. And then underdamped, is where it's the opposite. It's overly whipped and spiky. Okay, now let's get into the troubleshooting tips. First and foremost, start at your patient. Take a look at the site and make sure that there's no kinks, there's no air or bubbles or anything in the tubing. Arterial lines can look pretty similar to IVs, um, but a couple differences here. One, you can see that this is sutured in. Not all places suture their arterial lines, but a lot of times they're sutured in. Two, if you squeeze this tubing here, it's pressurized tubing. So you're not going to be able to squeeze it. Think of your traditional IV tubing. When you squeeze it, you can easily, you know, kink it off. This is not going to be easily caked. If the site and everything looks good, you're gonna follow all the way back, look at all your tubing for any bubbles, loose connections, make sure that your transducer is, again, leveled at the phlebostatic axis and zeroed. You're going to wanna to follow the tubing all the way back up to the pressure bag, Make sure your pressure bag is inflated to 300 millimeters of mercury or to this little green tab. You're also going to want to make sure that your saline bag that is inside of the pressure bag is filled up. If you've done all those things and your waveform still doesn't look great, then I've got a couple more tricks for you. Arterial lines can be very positional. A lot of times you actually need to kind of hyperextend a patient's wrist back a little bit in order to get a good waveform. Sometimes you can use an arm board or place a towel underneath their wrist to kind of get it to be positioned backwards. Sometimes they prefer their wrist to be this way. I don't know why, but if you kind of move their wrist around and look at your waveform, you're going to be able to tell if it makes the problem better or worse. If the positioning isn't helping, I will usually perform a fast flush. I've probably already done this just checking my arterial light waveform, but I will again do another fast flush to see if maybe there's anything in the tubing that I can't quite see that's maybe blocking inside of this arterial line catheter. I also check to see if there's good blood return by pulling back on your vamp or if you have like a closed system where there is no vamp, you can take the little caps up, clean it, hook it up to syringe and draw back. But I'll caution you, if you are meeting a lot of resistance, we don't wanna force it. Never force a flush, never force drawing back blood. If I have done all of these troubleshooting tips and nothing is working, we have a line team at my hospital. I will call them and see if they are able to figure anything out that maybe I couldn't figure out. But most of the time, it just is a bad arterial line that needs pulled and either replaced or maybe the patient doesn't need one anymore. Also going to throw this last little pearl in here if you've made it this far. Sometimes your arterial line waveform can look like it is overdamped or underdamped, but you just need to optimize your scale on the monitor. So actually go to your monitor, click on your arterial line waveform, 
find something that says optimum scale, optimize scale, something like that. And it should expand your scale on the patient's most recent blood pressure reading to make the waveform appear a little bit larger. That was a lot of information for arterial lines. Let me know if you have any questions and I'm happy to answer some more.